<clears throat> Hello, just a quick go through on some of my night vision kit um, and how I put it together. Nothing really new here, it's either all plug and play or hints and tips I've found on forums and stuff throughout the internet. Maybe modified slightly, but basically it's all information out there. So, first off, I use a E700 camera. This is from Shaw24. They're about 70 quid. Um, has the IR filter removed. I've got it fitted with a 12mm lens um, because I like to see the full size of the um, scope uh, ocular view. And it comes in a nice small box. Now to mount it to the back of the scope, there's lots of ways you can do it, but the easiest way I found, again on one of the forums, was to take a standard waste pipe fitting. This is it, Floplast. Has to be a Floplast brand. Um, these are about four or five quid for a packet of five at Screwfix. You should be able to find them at other plumbing stations. Um, they come in black, white or grey. I've got black. Two part fitting. It's an end cap, so you solve it well into the end and then obviously you've got a cap to, to block it off. But most importantly, it comes with a step. Uh, it's got a washered cap. Now luckily, the outer diameter before the step exactly fits the diagonals of the square. And it's a firm push fit, so it doesn't come out. And when you get to the step and push it all the way down, that makes sure the camera is central and square. Now I've run the standard cable up over, down the front of the camera. And all I've done it with a Dremel or a drill is put a very small hole here, um, big enough to pass the connector through. And then I put some tape over the top to clean it up. So basically you put it in, and I want the hole roughly at the bottom for where I want it. It doesn't really matter because you can rotate it around, but I found for me that's where I want it. Just push it in until it sits all round. It's nice and solid, it won't come out. It clears the back so you can use the uh, OSD joystick, etc., for modifications. Um, I've actually Thin the threads down just a fraction to make it slightly thinner. Um, could probably go another millimetre or so if I wanted to. Doesn't really matter. So we've got it in there nice and tight. Cable's not in the way of the lens. And again on the cap I've ground the cap down a little bit and taken it off just to make it slightly smaller. And then that can screw in. And just snug it up. Obviously from this side, apart from the hole in the front, it's fairly waterproof. Um, as you can see, the cap taken down looks a little better, I think. And also it's scuffed over to take the shine off of it. So a few rounds of tape on this one. Um, and you now have several options to be able to mount this to your scope. You can take, this is the Floplas 40mm coupler. This can obviously be solvent welded on the front of this to give you a longer bit. You can fit on the front of this depending on how cutting it to length, depending on the relief needed. Um, standard camera adapter threads, if you've got a scope with a threaded back and can find one that fits, you may need a couple of adapters up or down to get it to fit. I found the easiest way for 30 pounds. This is a Cobra DSA. Um, which clamps straight on the back of the scope. It's got these little adapter rings to fit, it, fit different size scopes. And the heavy metal bit is what goes on the scope, okay? This is obviously to fit one of their standard night vision kits. Now, for my scope, the adapter ring on the back, which would convert this to fit in this end, is needed for the scope. So again, a few rounds of tape, fatten it up, and then we can push it in there. And I've used a cut down, um, straight through adapter here just to block out the light between it and obviously keep the rain out of the lenses and stuff and any other thing so I can sit it in there and then obviously tighten it up so that's my 
scope kit. I find the spring clamp doesn't work quite so well on these, so we'll just do it like that. I'm running a wireless system, so in here, which is still a bit of a work in progress to be honest. Obviously Max Edition pouches, some I had lying around these are 20 quid, but obviously a small project box would be a lot cheaper. In here, I have a switch I've put in, um, a single channel wireless sender unit from eBay, and a little tiny 1800 amp battery. You could probably fit smaller in there, it doesn't need much, the camera only draws 70 milliamps. Um, and obviously all these BNC I've left as standard, but they can be chopped down and soldered uh, and fitted in a relatively small box. As I say, I had this lying around, and to be honest, I haven't actually got round because it works to, to changing it to anything. It'd be nice to have the box with the switch mounted on the outside, but it fits on here okay with these. Shush, I'm filming. Can we go away, please? Sorry about that. Um, the DSA has, between the two pieces, the front and the back, there's a rail, a bit of a Picatinny rail, which you can obviously mount various things through, so it'll be easy to screw a box. I've also found that um, when I changed my scope to the current one, um, the eye relief changed, so I've had to move this backwards and forwards. Um, I think it's a half inch difference between the scope I have now and the previous one I was using, so that was quite handy. I don't need to make up another adapter, obviously, that would be fairly simple to do. Um, so that goes straight onto the rifle. And obviously once you've got, uh, looking through the viewfinder, you can straighten up the crosshairs to take out any perceived cant, etc. Um, and centralise it. So that's part one, which is the camera unit. Second bit is how you view it. So once again, I have the other half of the transmitter sender unit. Again, they're about to turn from eBay, which goes in here. Again, another Maxpedition bag, but again, a small box. So the transmitter half is uh, the receiver half is here with its aerial. Um, I have some smaller batteries, but I'm just running a standard big 680 whatever milliampere hour Chinese battery, and I've, that only runs the transmitter. So it's a bit of an overkill for it. I could probably put in a couple of um, 14440s or 1850s just to run it. It should run happily on the 7.4 to 8 volts that they put out, and. That then, with a couple of customised um, cables, I've just cut one down and soldered it in uh, after working out the right terminals, runs into this unit, which is for these Visuex video goggles. This has its own internal battery, which charges off a 5 volt um, USB. So I've got three batteries here, which is a bit of a pain. Um, I want to obviously take the 5 volt and plug it in so I can run it and top off bigger battery but again it's something to get to it still gives me uh, a good two or three hours run time between between them and again these are the 920 eyewares they're an old model um, I find they're quite good they're the higher resolution um, they're a 3d glass minor problem when it uh, is you have to wear your glasses if you use them to look at them uh, which is a bit of a pain to have two on your nose, but because they're thin, some of the bigger ones look like sunglasses. Um, these thin ones, you can look over the top um, or underneath, so you don't have to trip over anything. And also in 3D, you can select it if you want to preserve your night vision or if it's a problem. I haven't found it so far yet. You can switch it to red-green mode um, on the eyes, which is obviously one of the 3D ones. You might feel a bit sick, but you might get used to it. As I say, at the moment, I haven't had a problem, to be honest, with the light output from the screens causing me any difficulty, uh, especially as you can look over them most of the time anyway. So that unit sits in a breast pocket, and I can clip the glasses off or on um, as I want. I'm not tethered to the gun. Uh, there's no cables messing around. You can tuck any spare ones away. Um, 
that was the main problem I had when I was wired to the gun with the goggles. As you put the gun down, it pulls the goggles off because you've forgotten. So that's the camera and the receiver. Obviously the third part normally for these is your IR source. This is a standard T20. I got this one from Night Tech. Um, has a three, three power switch, so 150 and 10% or something like that. Um, I've modified it by machining the end off and screwing on. This is a Yukon doubler front end. So we remove the existing lens completely. All I've done is ground the castellations off back to was it a millimetre or so away from the bottom of these scallops and that enables me to screw this in the threads match just a little bit to get them in square and then I lock that in and lock the head and just use the adjustment on here to do the um, the zoom on the head not using this one again I've got a Leopold quick release um, 25mm mount 25mm mounts fit on the body 30mm mounts will fit on the end cap if you want to I've got a remote tail switch but because of where I mount it I don't need it it's right in front of my finger um, or thumb and then that mounts on the bottom Pupatini rail on this Um, it's not sticking off the top of the gun, so it's not getting in the way again through hedges all around our way where I'm going a lot of electric fences. So that's basically my night vision setup. Um, I'm running it on, at the moment, an FX Verminator Mark II. Um, slightly modified, I've added a bipod, which is bolted on, a Picatinny rail and a foregrip um, attachment. We're also running an LSW bipod hook, which I find very useful, uh, and a Hawk 6 to 24 by 56 side, side wheel parallax uh, scope. I was running a 10 to 50, which is fine, but there's not enough field of view at 10 mag for me. Um, I hope to mount a small bullet cam just above the scope and run it that onto a second channel wireless that I can switch between with a wide angle lens on it um, as a sort of gun spotter. So thank you for that, hopefully that helps, but that's what I run at the moment. Let's see, hopefully it will bolt onto any of the other rifles I get in the future.